Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, elder candidate at Redeemer Fellowship. What's up? Nothing, man. How about you? Eh. Eh? Yeah. Same old, same old? Eh. Oh, we're getting now. We're getting texts. I'm getting a text. I got to turn my thing off. Oh, oh <laughs> <laughs> well, no! How do you getting, like it? I'm getting texts from my uh, from Moody Publishing. Oh, I didn't get one. Oh, oh, this is awkward. <laughs> how come? You, how come you're getting texts, and I'm the one that's got the books out with them? <laughs> uh, well, let's not worry about it. How, how's oh, your week been? Like, I got to take care of this. All right, uh, it's been good. It's been good. It's been it's been really busy. Will you sign a deal? Oh, stop it with Ed Stetzer. What? <laughs> I could talk to Ed. Okay. All right. Uh, It's been a good week. It's been a busy week. There's a lot going on. Lots of meetings. Lots of people. And uh, sermon prep and uh, writing and taking care of the family and all that. Uh, I'm having a a good week as much as I have been uh, staying up too late. I keep staying up late. Why do you like? Is it because you're catching up on your shows or? Well, maybe. I just like, I'm, I'm so like, I, I just want some chill time <laughs> and then I wind up staying up too late, chilling, watching shows and stuff. So I get to bed late. All right. All right. I get up early enough. It's just, uh, I, I need to start going to bed early. All right. So you just need more sleep. I need, you I need can't, more sleep. you can't run off of your normal four hours is what you're I'm What you're telling old, us is I'm four too, hours is not working. I'm too old and out of shape. That's what I'm saying. All right. Well, how about you, man? How's your week? Uh, week's been good. Just a lot of busyness, just trying to keep on top of things and, um, yeah, trying to get some things written and done and spending time with the family, enjoying, enjoying my evenings with the kids. You know, I think we pretty much say the same thing every time we should stop asking this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Hey, how's your week? And we say that we basically say the same stuff every that time. That we're busy. Yeah, we're busy. Hey, take care of the family. Yeah. And, and it's been well, good. Well, what else are we going to uh, say? Well, then, there's something really much it. going on. We should skip it. No, people want to know. No, they don't. Actually, you know what? Thing. Someone today, I want to say a dear brother, mm-hmm. uh, oh. asked me today yeah. how he could be praying for us. Just a listener and never met him before. Okay. And I, you know what? Pray for us, guys. Pray for us with our busyness. Pray for us in our families and ministry and uh, in our employment. I yeah. appreciate that. Pray pray for the two of us as, you know, I think, you know, sometimes it's hard to understand your role. You know what I mean? Like some some people in a relationship struggle to understand their their position, you know? And so just you know, pray, for, pray for Jimmy and me and Jimmy. Uh, as we work out uh, our issues. <laughs> yep, that sounds good. <laughs> what are we going to talk about today, Joe? We're going to talk about, uh, well, we're going to talk about corporate worship, but specifically, you know what I was thinking? What's that? We should talk about, not, we were going to talk about corporate worship, but why don't we talk about this? Why don't we talk, like, um, remember those old Fox TV shows, When Animals Attack? When Animals Attack! When Pets Attack. When yeah. Pets Attack! We when do... Bears Attack! When right. Sharks Attack! Or is that Shark Week? That's Shark Week That's on Shark AMC. Week, not AMC. Well, I don't know, what, what is it? with you? Sci-fi. No, oh my goodness. That's Shark ESPN. Mando. No! <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about. What show is it? I don't. Just on, tell man. me the thing. No, nah, I got to tell you. a e Discovery. All right. Discovery. So we can do When Worship Goes Bad. Why don't we do that? We'll do, why don't we do? When Worship Goes Bad. All right. When so, you furtick it up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can say that. Why not? I don't know. I just feel like it sounds really bad. Does it really? When uh, you furtick it? Yeah, man. How is, that, how is that bad? If I said it too fast. Is it, it offensive would... to him? Is that what you mean? Well, for sure, but that's not what I'm thinking. Um, oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, okay. okay. Just be careful when you're saying it. So uh, why don't we talk about when worship goes bad, and maybe we can come up with two ways to talk about it. But we were talking about this recently, so why don't we talk about this? Let's talk about the problem of trying to incorporate entertainment into worship okay, or trying to leverage entertainment as a draw for worship. I like that. Um, and so, yeah, why don't we, uh, why don't we do that? Because, I mean, uh, you and I are guys that love entertainment. Yeah. And we love worship. We love worship. We like peanut butter. We like chocolate. Oh, well, we like it when they're together. Yep. So why not entertainment and worship? Why don't we, you know, like maybe maybe we need to rethink this whole thing. Maybe entertainment and worship go together. Well, I think like chocolate and peanut butter. Well, dark, I don't know if we can. I don't, think can, I don't think it can go together, though, especially because they both have different aims. They both have different purposes. They right. both are trying to accomplish I think opposite ends of the spectrum, right? Yeah, totally. So like if we were going to say, okay, corporate worship, how would you define that then? Why don't we start with a definition of what we mean by corporate worship? Okay. So, um, so 
obviously people can talk about worship in different ways. Mm -hmm. So there's private worship and family worship and all of that. And yeah. all of that's legit. Yes, all of life can be worship, your bodies and all that. Yeah, my we're, body's a temple of the Holy Spirit, guys. We're, we're talking about corporate worship, which yes. is the church, uh, local churches. Gathered, I like that, local yeah, churches. Local churches gathered together. Now, hold on. When you mean gathered together, like gathered together on the internet? Well, that's not a gathering in my opinion. Okay, all right. We'll just gather. But so we're saying what, actually physically together. I, I think corporate worship, biblically defined, is believers gathered together in a local church, right? which, impri which implies uh, some sort of proximity within, a, within a, an area. Okay. <laughs> right? All right. So local uh, not church. Virtual. Yeah. Local church gathered together. Gathered together. When? That's important. I, I, we think it's important. This is on the Lord's Day, and this is a whole other topic. Yeah. I mean, well, I think we've talked about that. Haven't we talk, done the Sabbath? We've done the Sabbath thing, haven't yeah, we? Have yeah. we talked about Sabbatarian? Yeah, yeah, I think we did. We yeah, had we a did. brief thing. So I, I would just say, like, Saturday nights and all that stuff, whatever. But from from what we want to talk about here, gathered together for word, song, sacrament, or ordinance uh, on the Lord's Day. Yes, but I want to I want to clarify this even further, because I know we're not— we are not persuaded to gather together on a Saturday evening. Nothing wrong with gathering together wrong. on okay. a Saturday evening. But I also want to make sure when we say the local church gathers together, we're not talking about your discipleship group. No. We're not talking about your Bible study group. We're not talking about... You and know, we're big on those. And we're Here, big on we those. We love but, those. But we're saying those are not... That is not the gathering, the corporate gathering of the church. Right. Correct? Right. Because you, you want to have... Um, biblical officers there. Biblical officers, you want to see the sacraments administered rightly. Yep. The word of God preached correctly. Yep. Yeah. So we we need and discipline has to be a part of that. You just you know in case that's going on, mm -hmm. even in corporate worship, all of these things kind of come to come to bear. So uh, local church gathered together, word and in, in the ordinances, uh, songs, and um, really, I think. Um, when you're, when you're saying what's needed, we probably yeah. need to talk a little bit, just a little bit about the regulative principle versus the normative principle. All right. So you're talking about regulative principle that, that which is described or prescribed in scripture against, I shouldn't say against, or I can't, I don't want to pit them against each other. Well, yeah, they're, well, they're, they're not complimentary toward one another. Okay. But then the other, I guess, is if it's, if it's not against, or if it's not something that is instinctively I'm trying to think of the word I want to use. Like, so the, it's not instinctively commanded against doing explicitly. Explicitly, thank you. Yeah. That's the word I'm looking for. So, but you're right, Jimmy. the The regulative principle teaches that the only things that should be incorporated into corporate worship as essential components and yeah. elements are those things which are clearly prescribed or implied in mm -hmm. the Scripture. Um, those things, uh, the normative principle uh, would say. Um, if it isn't forbidden by scripture, you thank you. you that's a better you word. May, you may be able to use it in corporate worship with wisdom and prudence and all of that. Yeah. So Discernment being made. Normative principle isn't go crazy, everybody. Um, and exactly. So yeah, we're not, we're not, I mean, obviously in both scenarios, there is a worse case. Yeah. There's bad, and good and there's, bad examples. There's good right? and bad examples, yeah. you know? And so we're not saying we don't believe anyone that is normative you know, the general consensus is they're not, they're just not off in that. It's a very select few that go really crazy. Yeah. There's, there's, there's definitely the, and what we're going to get into are people that are more in the normative principle, Yeah, but not just like they're on the far end of the normative the principle. The far end. So, I agree. um, now we are regulative, regulative principle guys, and our church functions along uh, a regulative principle. Meaning, Absolutely. we're only going to put into our corporate worship what is prescribed by Scripture. Now there is disagreement among people that embrace the regulative principle. Yeah. Some people would say only Psalms. You can't only sing anything Psalms. but what's in the Psalter. Some would say uh, no instruments. Yes, they would. They would be wrong. They, well, are you looking at? Oh, yeah, are you, <laughs> you're looking at like. Uh, I, I disagree with that. I, mm -hmm. I think uh, the canonical picture uh, gives us uh, a, a plenty of warrant for, yep, yep. for instrumentation. So yeah, there's disagreements here, but the gist of it is it cannot be brought into corporate worship as an essential component if it's not warranted by scripture. Yes, absolutely. So whether it's pews um, or chairs doesn't matter. No, no. Hymnals or overhead doesn't matter. No. 
And so some things are what they call adiaphora. They are these, what they call accidental elements that don't really make or break worship. Yeah. Um, we are talking, uh, we focus on those things that are prescribed, like what's prescribed. What do you have to have in corporate worship? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think you do need to have... Uh, uh, you seem you, uncertain, Jimmy. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm trying to go through our liturgy. In what? Don't do that. Just what? What do you have to have in there? Okay, I'm just saying you got to have song. You got to have yep. uh, the preaching of the word. You got to have, I would say, uh, communion. Right. The reading of the word. The reading of the word. Prayers. Prayers. Mm-hmm. Would you say responsive? Like we already said, I'm thinking the responsive reading. Yeah, but that's just, but that, I mean, that's, that's a that's, that's a form. Yeah, that's a form of. So we've got we got reading the word. Yep. Praying the word. Singing the word. Singing the word. You see the word in the ordinances. Proclaiming the word. Yep. So it's it's very much word-driven, right? Absolutely, yeah. So worship uh, is the gathering of the local church under what we would call the, the means of grace. Yep. Right? Word, prayer, um, ordinances. It's the gathering of the local church under the means of grace on the Lord's day with what aim? Like what, what yeah, are uh, we aiming at? To glorify God. To worship God, so it's it's vertical. It's yeah. If you want, it, like yeah, yeah. I'm trying to be contemporary, dude. I get it. I was actually about to make a joke, and I decided that was a bad oh, time to yeah, make it. Okay, so you knew what joke uh, I was going to uh, make. I don't know. I don't think like you. <laughs> so, it, but you could say it's a vertical church. I mean, is what I'm thinking. That's you what know? I was going to see. What are you talking about? <laughs> All right. So it is. Um, it is definitely upward, right? Yep. The, the aim is the glory of God. The focus is God Himself. Yep. We, when we worship, we are offering something, right? Yep. We are offering up ourselves yeah. to God. That's right. We are looking to Him. We are ascribing worth, uh, glory, and, and honor to Him. Worthship. Um, yeah, worthship. Right. That's what. The, that's where the word comes from. This is a different thing than entertainment oh absolutely so now that, that that's not to say i want to make sure we clear something here that's not to say that someone is not enjoying worship sure right because i think sometimes people have this idea that worship could just be humdrum yeah let, let's let's come back to that right, we'll i, I, I to think that. that's a really good point but i want us to spend time on that all right so let, let's talk about the joy and the drama and all of that of corporate worship all when right, it's done fine. right. Let's do that. So, so, so corporate worship is Godward. Yep. Focused on Him. Yep. And uh, means of grace, Lord's Day, God's people, yep. all that. Now, entertainment, uh, and, we're, and we're talking about this because the, one of the ways that worship goes bad yeah. is through this this bringing in of entertainment into the local church. Yeah. So that it is either a draw to bring people in, or sometimes it is a means by which we keep people in. Exactly. Um, exactly. So let's talk about entertainment. Yep. Do you want to define it? Entertainment. I would say then, uh, entertainment is, uh, with the, I, I'm just going to say with the focus, the focus and aim is on the pleasure and joy of us, of ourselves. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think because um, I, when I think of entertainment, I'm, I'm going to something. I go to be entertained, right? I'm like going, when we went to see Wolverine, not Wolverine. What's it called? Logan. Logan. We went. We to, went, to, we go went see Logan. to go be entertained by Logan. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't so entertaining. It was good. No, it wasn't. It was good. It wasn't. It was. Here's the thing. It wasn't uh, go to the movie theater worthy, which we did. I know. It, yeah. it wasn't go watch it multiple times worthy. No, it definitely wasn't worth. Uh, homeboy dumping half of a large bucket of popcorn all over me while I was reclined. FYI, homeboy is not me in this situation. In that time, did I not help you? You did. I did. You I did. cared. You ate popcorn off my belly. You know what, dude? <laughs> There's some things you don't you talk did. about. You did. There's okay. some things you don't so talk listen. about on the podcast. Um, so entertainment, <laughs> it is it is oriented towards us because entertainment, as it's generally defined, right, is uh, something. It can be an event or a performance. Yes. It yeah. is something that amuses people. Yeah. Right. So it, it's an it's an amusement. It may bring joy mm. or laughter. So uh, entertainment is essentially this. Um, you could say it's an offering directed toward us. Yeah. It's yeah. I, I would absolutely agree. And even going with your whole vertical thing, it's lateral. Yeah. Or it's horizontal. A, horizontal. Right. Like it's a horizontal uh, focus. Now, entertainment's a good thing. I love entertainment. All right. We, we love to be entertained. We entertain each other. We do. I mean, and we're pretty good at it. We laugh we're, a lot. Uh, yeah, we do. So um, entertainment is 
a good thing. I would say it's a part of God's common grace to us all. Yes. Now, joy, laughter. Mm-hmm. Yep. It refreshes us. It refreshes the mind. Yep. It, ta- it gives you, you a bit of a break. Absolutely. It can be a healthy distraction. Absolutely. Or a healthy break from the workload that you're you know doing throughout the day. Absolutely. I know that there are some days uh, in the summer where you've told me that after a particularly hard day of work, uh, you might knock off early and go and do some chill time with your dad. Yeah. Is that fair to say? That's fair like to I say. I get in trouble to say that? No, you're not getting okay. in trouble. So, but, like you, but you talk about it like, because it's not all the time. It's a real no, thing. No, it's a real thing. But you're like, it's so sweet. Yeah, it's fun. It's, it's great. so great. So uh, recreation, entertainment, Absolutely. these are good things. Absolutely. So it's not a bad thing in and of no. itself. Now, why would churches be drawn to use entertainment, this offering towards people that mm-hmm. will... Um, uh, what was the word I used? Um, entertain, <laughs> uh, amuse, amuse. Thank you. Uh, that will amuse them. What? Um, why would churches be drawn to use that? Do you think? Because a lot of churches are, and we'll talk about the ways in which they're doing it. But, um, I mean, I, let's go with good motives. Fine, let's go with good motives. Um, they want to reach the lost. Okay, so how is this gonna? How is this in their minds? How in their minds? Happen? I think uh, the mentality is. We want to kind of be an in between, right? Like for a, a number of people that may not have a church background, they weren't raised in the church. It's all kind of new to them, and it might seem kind of scary or weird or wonky. So we want to uh, be a, I guess, a, just a, a, a. I don't know. I'm trying to think of the word I want to use. Like not as frightening. Yeah, yeah. So they they want to give them a reason to come to church. Yes. Right? Like here's And a that's not to, to say they're dumbing down or or watering down the gospel. So I'm, I'm trying not to balance that. It. So I'm trying to balance entertainment and yes. biblical worship. Exactly. So um I don't think you can personally. But um No, but what I mean is just because their entertainment doing like in worship maybe doesn't necessarily mean entertainment in the preaching. All right. Well, all of it's worship, right? Fair enough. So, right, but you yeah. mean you mean the music? I mean the music. Yeah. While they may go in it's, that direction, it's absolutely possible for entertainment too. But then the the question is: is if you treat the the song portion of corporate worship as entertainment, what effect does that have on the whole? And are, I agree, are yes. we at that point now robbing people of the right experience in that aspect of worship? So I, I would say yes, we are robbing them and. Now that I'm thinking, because we're processing this together as yeah, we're going yeah. along, uh, I think it also, though, uh, leads them down a path throughout the service. Like, I remember one time watching a video of John Piper speaking, mm-hmm. and he was speaking at this, like, it was psychologists or some counselors. Okay. And so every other speaker beforehand was just entertaining and jokes mm. and jokes and jokes. And he gets up there and he pours out his heart, and they keep laughing at him. Mm-hmm. And he, and he stops it. He does say a few times, I don't know why you're laughing right now. And they still laugh. And he goes, I don't know why you're laughing. I am sincerely sharing my struggles and my sin. And you're laughing at me. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes it, when we start with entertainment, mm-hmm. when it comes to the preaching of the word, they're expecting that as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, the every part of the service is supposed to work together, right, to bring us somewhere. And so from the opening scripture reading, don't be late, fools, be to church on time. Mm-hmm. From the opening scripture reading to uh, the prayers, the songs, the, 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 all of it, the, the, the preaching of the word, the ordinance of the Lord's Supper, all of that is designed to work together to uh, create something, right? This worship uh, offering to God that uh, if you start to mess with the pieces and pull them apart, the, the whole really suffers. So I, mm-hmm. I think people are, I think churches are drawn to use entertainment as a uh, as an important part of worship, whether that's in the pulpit yep. or whether that is in corporate worship or giving away cars, you see churches, big churches give away cars on Easter. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. No. Oh, for real. No. Okay, I've seen that in charismatic churches in Africa. No, I've no, never no. seen that here. Oh, yeah. No, sorry. In Africa, I've seen them pray for your car. <laughs> no, no. I've seen it on TV where they're like, we're going, to, we're praying for your Pathfinder right now. Okay, well, that's easy. Anybody can pray for a Pathfinder. Yeah, yeah. But to give somebody a car, to yeah, give away right. TVs, all that kind of stuff. So there's all this entertainment, right? This, uh, this. You know, there's skits, 
like there's drama, there's like comedy stuff. Um, specials, people call them specials. Special, I've heard that. I've heard yep. that frame or, or that that word used. Right. So, and and they all have these varying degrees of, uh, I don't know, various levels of offensiveness to me uh, at times. Um, offensiveness. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, like, look, I'm so, not. I'm not disagreeing with your word. It's just I'm, 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 I'm saying, intrigued okay. by that word that right, you're so, using. So here's what I'm saying. I go to a church and the band is tight. And or the choir is amazing, or the organ is blasting, whatever. Um, but the whole thing is designed to be a performance to observe, to be amused by, or to be moved by, instead of me participating in something. Absolutely, that's pretty offensive. Yeah, I be, agree. Because I think we're all supposed to be offering, we're all supposed to be singing, participating as much as possible. Well, I think it's also offensive because from the start when we defined entertainment, we've said that that focuses on us right. and we're robbing God of the worship and glory due only for him. Yeah. And I've, I've heard other people that incorporate a lot of entertainment into corporate worship as we want to give something to somebody. We want to bless them with this. We want yeah. them to have this great experience. And what I think is happening though, is that they begin to um, hold out amazing experiences for people yeah. that are so that fall so far short of what they could be experiencing if um, if they would get rid of the entertainment and focus on the means of grace Absolutely. in corporate worship. So I, I think that's, that's part of my problem here is entertainment is good and someone may be entertaining at times in mm -hmm. their... Uh, preaching or the band may be entertaining, uh, but that's that's not what they're striving for, and it shouldn't be the point. The point should be for all of us together to be worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth, right? Absolutely. So the danger of mixing these two things, because I, I think there's a problem in mixing the two. I, I think some people would say, well, no, no, we have biblical worship. We want to include entertainment. They may not like that word. Yeah. We want to include this this aspect of entertainment um, to, to, to enhance it or to elevate it. But the way that we've been defining these things, I think it begins to cancel each other out. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Especially if the aim, if the aims are so different, how could you, how could you have two competing aims, uh, both done well and both succeed at the same time? Right. Cause one is aimed at God. The other is aimed at us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so something's got to give. Yes. Like yes. something's going to give. And I think that, you know, part of the problem here is, you know, we, we maybe there, maybe you've experienced church that is not well uh, organized and worship, corporate worship, that yeah. there hasn't been much thought put into it. And so you, you're, you're thinking like, oh, well, so we sing the same three hymns every week. Uh, this guy preaches a terrible sermon. And then we have communion uh, four times a year. Uh, this is pretty weak. And so you go to the other extreme of this highly polished, highly professional uh, performance. Yeah, absolutely. Where everything is executed perfectly, but it has become the, the, the opposite problem. So I'm not saying that there's um, that, that the guys that are into entertainment uh, are doing everything wrong and the guys that are not into entertainment are doing everything right. Yeah. Um, there is, there is a, I think everybody, all of us, we need to put more work and more thought into corporate worship, what we're doing, how we're doing it, you know, continuing to reform our practices. In Absolutely. And I think be and, intentional. Yeah. Right. Like, it, like you said, I, I love the way you phrase that, like think through it. Um, because I think sometimes it's easy to just throw something together. We're just saying, yeah. all right, let's just put these four songs. Uh, someone's going to get up and preach. The songs really don't go with the sermon. Right. Um, maybe there's a reading, maybe there's not. Uh, and they just kind of throw it together and just say, well, you know what? This is, this is church. Like we're, we're not trying to be professional here. Yeah. We're just trying to, we're just being us. We're like, well, no, you need to be a bit more intentional because what you're doing is an offering to God. Yeah. And, and you're and and because you are using the means of grace to proclaim God's excellencies, it is, it is this Godward focus, but there is this um, reciprocal 
um, mm. blessing that comes mm. to us as we are blessing the Lord. So we're, we're definitely not saying that, oh, we're going to offer this stuff up to God and there's nothing for there's us. There's nothing for us, yeah. Um, I think the, the benefit that we get from what we can just call true worship or uh, biblical worship or worship in spirit and truth, whatever, not entertainment, the, 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 the real benefit is that the means of grace are what God uses to impact us, to change us, to transform us. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, there's been many times um, in in worship at Redeemer that as uh, as one of the leaders goes through um, and leads us in responsive reading that mm-hmm. I have just like God has used that. The spirit of God has used that to convict me of my sin or has used that to um, uh, to draw my heart in awe of him. Right, and it works because it's the scripture, yes, um, and and the truth of scripture being laid out there for us, absolutely. And that can happen in song as well. That's why we sing songs. Songs yes. are a part of this. So we're we're we are for music, and at Redeemer, we have a band. We have a couple of bands with talented uh, musicians, and so we're not against that. Um, we're not against even being good. That's that. That's great. No, no. We we pride ourselves on on seeking to do well. In we, that. we we, we want to do our best in all things. So that that's fine. But the point is, is are we focusing? Are we trying to hit people with uh, an amusement or some sort of thrill? Absolutely. Or or are we directing this toward God in such a way that it leverages the means of grace so that we are actually convicted? I mean, this is the thing. Like. Um, Entertainment seeks to replicate drama. Yeah. Right? It's, it's replicating or, or creating a, a kind of drama, a false drama. Uh, but real worship, without the entertainment, emphasizes true drama. The, what's, what's more dramatic than sinners being reconciled to a holy yeah. God? Uh, yes. what's, more, what's more dramatic or thrilling than the prisoner being set free by Christ? Uh, what's more awe-inspiring uh, that... That uh, what is more awe inspiring than the fact that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, right? So that he a, was raised from the dead, and that he is we are forgiven that we he has atoned for ours, yeah. Like, I, I just don't, yeah, okay. So, I, we're all and we're all one, like, we're reckoned, look at all of us, we're reconciled to each other now, that's right. I mean, that's real drama, I think that, and so you have all of this drama, and then you have not, you know, entertainment can pique your interest, it can, um, it can stir your emotions, but the means of grace. That that penetrates the soul, Hebrews tells us. Yes. It, it, it changes the heart. It's God sanctifies us through that. It's real transformation. So we've got real drama and real transformation, it, which means in the midst of this, this act of corporate worship, we can go from experiencing sorrow, true sorrow for sins and our confession, mm-hmm. uh, conviction, lament, to songs of praise and songs of deliverance for what God has given us in Jesus. Absolutely. The entertainment, I think, really can sell us short and get us to stop short of experiencing the true depths of of the wonder and the awe of God. Because entertainment is, on some levels, easier because you have control over it. If you're you're good at entertaining, you don't really need God to show up. No, no, you just follow the plan. You just follow the plan. So I think I think when we're saying like is worship without entertainment more powerful? Absolutely, the answer is yes. Now, I, th- I think we should probably go back just to say um, this is not about style. No, this is not about you know uh, what era that you pull your songs from. No, um, no, because we have a lot of old songs and a lot of new songs. Yep. So it. It's not, it's not about that. And there are some people there. Are, I'm sure there are some regulative principle guys that would hate what we do because we have, you know, modern songs. We've written some of our own songs. Um, and we have electric guitar, dobro, bass, drums, piano, mm-hmm. uh, accordion recently. That yep. was awesome. That was good. Um, so I, I, I think that we can say that what the musicians do or when a preacher stands up, there is, um, it, it, it can be pleasing. It can be well done. Um, there might be an aspect of amusement to it, but the point, the goal, the aim is not that. It is something else. So I, I can understand though why those that are like, driven to bring more and more entertainment into corporate worship, because who wants to go to church these days? 
I mean, who wants to go to real church? Who like what lost person that you're trying to reach yeah. wants to come to our church service that's an hour and a half where we have six songs and a 45 minute message? Mm-hmm. Who wants to who wants to come to that? Now, I, I think we can say, well, if God's at work in an individual's life, yeah, bring, yeah. sure. But for a lot of people that see corporate worship as a big door through which they can start evangelism and bring people into the church to expose them, I get why they're drawn to use entertainment because they're trying to reach more and more people. So but is that but is that the door though? Like, is that I mean, I don't know. Is that the really the evangelism door? I think it's a form. It's, I think it can be. Yeah. But I'm not saying it. I don't think it should be the primary. Maybe that's the word I'm looking for. I think I think on on one level, I totally agree that we all need to be out in our communities with our friends, neighbors, and coworkers, and sharing the gospel. To yeah. Everyone that will listen, inviting them into our lives, and sure, inviting them to church. Yeah. Um, now, when it comes to churchy stuff in our community, um, outsiders are much more likely to come to our church service than they are to a small group, because yeah. small group is pretty intimate. It's 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 pretty real, and it's going to be. They don't do that. It's but they have enough of a sense of what church is. They can go. All right, I could show up, sit down listen to some music, listen to a guy preach and get out of there. Yeah, yeah. So it does become a door through which, and probably our biggest um, institutional door that people walk through to engage our church. Absolutely. But I don't think, yeah, I think you're right. that um, I think it's wise to see it as a means of evangelism yeah. because you're always going to have people that haven't believed in Christ there. But I think we need to be more... But not the primary. I, I, don't, I don't think it's the primary. But then again, you know, culturally, maybe there are times when it is. I, I think, you know, it, it just may work out that way um, somewhat naturally if people are not really engaged in evangelism. And to be honest, most of us aren't. Most of us are not yeah, really yeah. serious about evangelism. Most Christians are not, regardless of whatever tribe they're in. Some are much more than others, but in general, I just don't think so. So I think worship is a beautiful thing. Entertainment is a gift from God. But worship, corporate worship, is so important to us um, that we want to make sure that the aim is right and that the benefits of that aim, meaning the grace of God yeah. coming to us through the means of grace, is is so important that to, to monkey around with worship, which is only going to give us temporal relief or satisfaction or distraction, is, is interfering with that. Like the, people don't need, <laughs> I was thinking about it. Um, we, what do, what do we need? Do we need to be amused? Uh, do we need grins and giggles or do we need grace? We need, we need God's grace. Yeah. We need the law and the gospel to be pressed into us so that we experience it in a way that, um, sorry, I was my. My, I didn't turn off my notification. So that we experience it in a way that not only honors God, but is bringing about transformation. Right? Absolutely. So uh, worship can be great. Worship can also go bad. This is one of the ways it goes bad. Um, what are we going to, we going to do another one on this? We talk I think about, so. What are we going to talk about? Uh, how about preaching? When worship goes bad, bad preaching? Bad preaching. Okay. All right. So we'll talk, let's talk about bad preaching. Mm-hmm. What makes bad preaching, bad preaching? And what do you do when you experience bad preaching? Let's do all, let's get into all that. Let's do that. You can right. follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head on over to the website, DoctrineDevotion.com, click on the sign up page and get on our email list. Uh, you can head on over to iTunes and leave us an honest five-star review. You know what, though? You can also head back to the store. After you've done the honest five-star review, pick yeah. up a tee, pick up a hoodie, grab Joe Thorne's new trilogy on the church. Hey, you know what you can do for me? A journal or, hey, or confessional piety videos. Dr- videos, yeah, the videos are available. We got those up. And the books. Grab the books. Also, like, uh, head on over to Amazon if you've read my books and leave a review on Amazon. Yes, we didn't. That we, would help. Why didn't, why didn't we say that before? And I just I just thought about it. All right, yeah. Head on over to Amazon and uh, leave some honest five star raving <laughs> reviews of uh, of Joe's three new books. Somebody on Goodreads gave me a two star. They gave you a two star? <laughs> yeah. What? I, because I it was like it was actually one whole book, but broken into three. No, he was he, he didn't like uh, the Reformation theology. Oh, so. I'm so shocked that Joe Thorne is. <laughs> So, uh, Fresh yeah. Pod every Monday and Thursday. Articles on Wednesday. 
soon and i promise soon whatever ain't gonna happen. video sessions on gonna friday happen. when we when we finally have time oh yeah perfect so never later